Okay, so we're going to prove that the limit as theta goes to zero of the sine of theta divided by theta is equal to one. We're going to look at the unit circle, at least part of the unit circle, from zero to pi halves. Um, we have to use a theorem called the sandwich theorem or the squeeze theorem. And what we're going to do is we're going to find two different functions, one that is bigger than the sine of theta over theta, and one that is less than the sine of theta over theta, both of which have a limit of 1 as theta approaches 0. And so if you have a function less than the sine of theta over theta, whose limit is 1 as theta approaches 0, and a function greater than the sine of theta over theta, whose limit is 1 as theta approaches 0, then the sine of theta over theta as theta approaches 0 is squeezed between these other two functions, both of which have limits at 1 when theta approaches 0. <clears throat> so we sort of need to find those, those two functions to actually sandwich sine theta over theta. So let's start with our angle theta. And we'll just pick an angle here on the unit circle. So here's our angle theta. If we drop a perpendicular here, if we consider the sine of theta as the opposite over the hypotenuse, so the sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is the radius of the unit circle, which is 1. So the sine of theta is opposite over 1 which means the opposite is the sine of theta. So this length right here is sine of theta. Okay, we're going to use something similar to that if we look at a different triangle. So I'll, I'll outline this triangle in red. So this will be our red triangle. Okay. If we extend this, and then drop a perpendicular there from this point, the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, but the adjacent length here is 1. So the tangent of theta opposite over 1, so this length right here must be the tangent of theta. Okay. Now, One more line segment in here, making a different triangle. Um, that I'll outline in blue. Okay. So let's find the area of the blue triangle. Well, the area of triangle is one half base times height. So the area of the blue triangle is one half times the base, which is one, times the height, which is sine theta. So it's one half times the sine of theta. That's the area of the blue triangle. Okay. Now let's find the area of this black triangle. Again, it's one half base times height. So it's going to be one half times one times the tangent of theta. So it's equal to one half times the tangent of theta. And we need to find one more area, and that's going to be the area of this sector, this piece of the pie here. Okay, so the area of, of that sector, which is bigger than the area of the blue triangle by this little piece here, but, you know, obviously quite smaller than the area of the black triangle. So the area of the sector is 
is going to be the piece of the pi divided by the whole pi. So that's going to be theta divided by 2 pi, so our angle divided by 2 pi, times the area of the whole unit circle. And the area of the whole unit circle is pi, so it's theta divided by 2 pi times pi. Well, what happens, these two pi's cancel. So the area of the sector is theta over 2. Now we can relate these three areas with an inequality. So the smallest of the three is the blue triangle. So we have, we have one half the sine of theta is less than, now the next biggest one is the area of the piece of the pi, the area of the sector, which is theta over 2. So we have one half sine theta is less than theta over 2, which is less than one half times the tangent of theta. Okay. So now multiply through by 2. And we get sine theta is less than theta is less than tangent of theta. Now multiply through by 1 over sine of theta. So then you have sine of theta divided by sine of theta is less than theta divided by sine of theta is less than, so the tangent of theta is sine theta over cosine theta, and then we're multiplying through by 1 over sine theta. So we have this right here is the tangent of theta divided by the sine of theta. And then we'll just simplify this. Sine of theta divided by the sine of theta, well that's 1. 1 is less than theta over the sine of theta, which is less than, well you simplify this, this is 1 over cosine of theta. So, um, if you reciprocate these and flip the signs, um, well, if you reciprocate 1 over 1, that's still 1. And then we're going to flip the sign, we'll still have sine theta over theta, so it's closer to what we're looking for, sine theta over theta, greater than cosine theta. And then I'm just going to rewrite this as cosine theta is less than sine theta over theta, which is less than 1. Okay, so we want to ask ourselves, what's the limit? What's the limit as theta approaches 0 of these two functions? So what's the limit as theta approaches 0 of 1? Well, 1, that's just the horizontal line. The, the, the limit of y equals 1 as theta approaches 0 is 1. What's the limit of cosine theta as theta approaches 0? Well, that one you can just use substitution. Uh, what's the cosine? So, so what's the limit as theta approaches 0 of the cosine of theta? Well, you can just plug in theta is equal to 0, and the cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So now what you have is 1 is less than the sine of theta over theta, which is less than 1. And here we're taking the limit as theta approaches 0. So this is squeezed between these two other functions whose limit is 1 when theta approaches 0. Therefore, the limit as theta approaches 0 of the sine of theta over theta is equal to 1.